Hi, my name is Luca. I work as a data scientist in Arsutura. The next 10 minutes, I'll try to explain you how modern face recognition systems work. So let's get started. Face recognition is a pipeline which consists of three parts. Face detection, feature extraction, and face classification. So you get an image on the input, and the first step is det detecting face in the image. After detecting face, we crop it out of the image and extract features from it. And finally, we classify face based on those features. In this talk, I'll focus on the core part of the face recognition, which is feature extraction part. Most of the modern face recognition systems use FaceNet or FaceNet-like networks as feature extractors. So what is FaceNet? FaceNet is a deep neural network used for extracting features from an image of a person's face. It was published by Google scientists in 2015. FaceNet takes image of a face's input and outputs face embedding. So what is face embedding? Face embedding is a vector which encodes face features. Ideally, face embeddings of images of the same people are very similar and face embeddings of images of different people are not similar. So to make this more clear, let's visualize it. Since embedding is a vector, we can interpret it as point and coordinate system. For demonstration purposes, let's assume the face embedding has only two dimensions, so we can plot it in 2D coordinate system. Okay? So let's plot this face based on its embedding. It looks something like this, and let's also plot a few other faces. So as you can see on the slide, images of the same people are grouped together, which means that their embeddings are very similar. So now that we visualize this, the question is, how do we classify a person on some unknown image using face embeddings? Okay, so let's show it in this example. Here's an unknown image which clearly belongs to the male person class. So how do we classify it correctly? Well, there are several ways of doing this, but one possible way will be to use the nearest neighbors method. So we calculate face embedding of this image, and since it clearly belongs to the male person class, when we plot it, it should be close to that class, as you can see. And then we calculate distances between the unknown image and known images. And as we can see here, unknown image is clearly closest to the male person class, so we classify it as being part of that class. Its nearest neighbors belong to the male person class. Okay, so this is one way of classifying people using face embeddings. But really, you can use any classifier you want for the classification part. For example, we can train logistic regression on face embedding of the known images, and then logistic regression would learn some boundary between these classes, which would probably look something like this. And then when you get a new and unknown image, you first calculate face embedding of that image, feed it to logistic regression, and get the class. That's it. Okay, so, you know, this all looks great, you know, just feed the image to FaceNet, get the magic embedding, you know, and get the class in any time, just use any classifier. But how is this embedding so good? You know, how does FaceNet learn to produce such good embeddings where face similarities are preserved? And what do these numbers in the embedding even mean? Let's try to explain this by digging deeper into FaceNet training process. At the beginning of the training, FaceNet produces random vectors for face embeddings, which means that faces are scattered randomly when plotted, as you can see on the slide. And FaceNet learns in the following way. First, it randomly selects an anchor image. And then it randomly selects an image of the same person as the anchor image, which is positive example. And then it randomly selects an image of a person different than the anchor image, which is negative example. And finally, it adjusts its weights so that the positive example is closer to the anchor than the negative example. And then we repeat this process many, many times. We repeat it until the images of the same people are grouped together and far from the others. So I hope now you get a better idea on how FaceNet learns to produce face embeddings which are similar for the same people. You know, they're enforced to be similar by the training process itself. 
but you know how do we explain the numbers in the embeddings you know what are these numbers is this nose land is this color of the eye you know something that seems important for recognizing people well the truth is that we don't actually know now during training process Facet is trying out many different combinations of features until it finds the ones that work the best the ones that separate different people it's really hard to interpret these numbers in the bedding but we're pretty sure that something like nose land or i don't know, distance between eyes or hidden behind these numbers because we can intuitively assume that these features are important for distinguishing different faces but we cannot nail the exact features that facenet is using okay so that will be all from me i hope this was interesting I, wrote, I also wrote a blog post about face recognition, which explains this in more detail. Uh, link and QR code are on the screen if you're interested in reading it. That'll be all. Thank you.